Hi there, I'm Simber Lily Quinn, Holistic Harpist and founder of Holistic Harpistry, and I'm so glad you're here. If you're here, it's because you're thinking about buying a little harp or you've joined my program and you're getting ready to buy your first harp and you need to know a little bit more in order to buy one. So let me introduce you to the harpsicle. This is a wonderful little harp. I really love my harpsicle. It's four and a half pounds, fits in an overhead bin, and it's really affordable considering what harps cost these days. Uh, let me tell you a, couple, a, a little bit about the harp. So the top part here is called the neck or the head. Um, the neck holds all of these pins. There are various different pins here along the top. And then underneath these pins, which hold the strings, underneath the pins are levers. These little knobby things that go up and down are levers. And what they do is they raise uh, the string one half step. For example, this is a C. And with the lever, it raises it one half step and you can have some fun with this. This particular harp has a full set of levers. You do have the option of buying fewer levers, even fewer levers, and no levers. You can play holistic harp, you can play harp for yourself, and you can play harp for others with no levers whatsoever. But if you want to play in different keys, or if you want to play blues or jazz or some things that require chromatics, that require half steps, then you'll want to consider getting a harp that has the levers on it. This part of the harp here is called the sound box. This is where the sound comes from. And harpsicles are designed to have very small sound boxes, and they produce very large sound considering how small their sound box is. This piece here is called the post. And it's a um, very important part of the harp. It keeps it all together, keeps it from pulling itself apart. Harps have tension on them. They, because the strings are all on one side of the neck, I'll point this so you can see how that works. The strings are all on one side of the neck that the harp is actually trying to pull itself together like this. And so in order to prevent that, you have this big piece of wood that runs along here all the way down to here to hold it, to keep it from pulling itself apart. Okay, a few more things I wanna point out to you. Your harpsicle will come with the um, guitar buttons on them. They won't be in this location. I installed this myself as an experiment, but it will have the buttons located here and also down here on the front. You'll notice another one here. Again, this was an experiment. Oops, sorry, I'm sorry, that's something else. The, uh, the button's here, and I'll show you that in just a second. So that's the harp. This harp has 26 strings on it. That's the minimum I recommend you get. Any fewer strings than that seems like a great idea because it makes the harp smaller. But in fact, what happens is your hands have to kind of both be playing in the same area, and it can be um, a real challenge actually to play on a very small harp and figure out which fingers go where. It's much easier if you give both hands their own real estate. They can be neighbors to each other, but actually keep some distance from each other. It's a little bit easier. Now, um, one of the things that I, uh, well, I don't have a lot of requirements, but this would be one of them, that if you decide to get this harp, you should also get the stand that goes with it. Here it is on the bottom and I'll take it apart so you can see how this works. This piece comes off. This is an adapted snare drum stand. This piece slides right out. And as I say, it's really nice. They're four and a half pounds so that you can do that. <laughs> so this is the piece that fits in the harp in the back and it slides into the harp and goes on like this. And then this has legs on the bottom that you can uh, adjust here, and that this piece, this uh, this neck here, adjusts up and down. So you can actually um, sit at different heights of chairs, or if you're standing, you can put this on a table and then be standing at the heart as well. The last uh, couple more things I want to show you is some options for playing. Now I, I mentioned the the guitar buttons. That's for a guitar strap, and here is my guitar strap. 
This is a basic, basic, basic guitar strap. I think I paid $5 for this on the sale rack at the guitar store. You can get it from Harpsicle. I think theirs are $9. And what I'm doing is I'm attaching this here. Let me show you one more time how that goes. I'm attaching this here, and then this strap goes over my shoulder and around here and then attaches right here. And then I can let this rest against my body. <clears throat> I can stand up, you can say I can stand up, and I can play here. I don't recommend this right away because it is a little tippy and you have to work with some balance issues to get the harp really steady at first. That's why I like putting this on the stand to begin with. It's freestanding and you don't have to balance anything. It just, it stands on its own. But eventually you may want to be walking through a nursing home or a hospital or a party or some a conference and lots of different um, options there. And you want to be able to wear the harp. You can do that with the strap. So I'm going to show you one more uh, option that you have for playing this harp. Um, you can also sit on the floor. I have one student who sits on the floor um, and holds the heart between her legs, but I also want to show you this little critter. Uh, in some places I've seen this called knee bones. I think they call it the stick on the harpsicle website. And so you loosen this wing nut to make a little more space down in here. See, there's a little more space in there. Oh, you can even see my eyes. There it is. And then this slides in the back of the harp like this, and you tighten tighten this to the prop to uh, make sure both sides are lined up inside. And there's a little felt so that it protects the harp. It's not gonna not gonna injure the harp. Tighten it to uh, finger tightness, and then this rests in your lap. So I'm gonna put it down here. Actually, I'm gonna move my camera down just a little bit so you can see that this is now resting on my lap. And I can play like this. So that, just one moment, bring myself back here. So that is the harpsicle harp, introduction to the harpsicle harp. I will, in another lesson, teach you how to tune the harpsicle harp, and in another lesson entirely teach you how to change the strings. I've had this harp now almost three years, and I have not needed to change the strings. So I don't anticipate that you'll have to change your strings very often either, but want to make sure that you know how to do that. The last thing before I say goodbye is I want to introduce the big sister to this little harp, which has been peeking over my shoulder here the whole time, that, um, that it's a maple harp. I have a friend who is a wood burning artist, B. Israel, she's in uh, Oregon, and she did this beautiful mermaid and whale design on, on the harp. So it is also a harpsicle harp, it's called a harpsicle grand, and you're certainly welcome to purchase that one if you want to. It's more expensive, but let me show you about, show you this one as well. So like the other, uh, the smaller harpsicle, it has uh, all the levers here. This is the, again, the neck or the head, the pillar or the post, sometimes it's called, and then the sound box here. This has 33 strings, I believe, or 31. 33 strings, and um, and then I had this special artwork done by uh, B. Israel. It's, it's all wood burn and painted on. In the, I love how she's taken the the dots, the bubbles here, and then made them in you know into this dope, this one here, and and the moon of course up here, and the whales. So, so this is also available uh, if you're interested in this kind of harp. Now, what the thing I want to mention about both these harps is that they can be amplified, and I do that. So you can see here, I mentioned this a moment ago, this piece right here, 
can see right in there. That's for a quarter inch jack. That's for a cable and then inside. Let me show you the inside. That's the pickup. That's how the sound travels from the soundboard out into the pickup here. And from there, it plugs into a regular cable and into an amp or into my computer. And yes, I can plug my harps directly into my computer. And then this one, I want you to, sh to show you this one also has the same, we would call it a puka in Hawaii, a hole where you put something. This is where the pickup is located, and then I'll show you the inside if I can show you the pickup in there. I don't think you can really see it in there, but it's in there. And that's how the harp is. That's how I'm able to record my harps and amplify my harps, and I highly recommend it. It works really, really well. So that's the tour of the harps, and I'm so glad that you are on your harp journey. A friend of mine says that um, when the harps enter your life, they will change your life forever, and it's so true. But fortunately, it's always for the better. So welcome to the journey, and we'll see you again at Holistic Harpistry.